Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at all the methods we can use to cut up objects in Blender. So recently I got asked what the best method is for cutting up an object in Blender, and that's a very difficult question to answer, because let's be honest, in Blender, most of the time, there's a million and one ways of doing something, it just depends what's right for you and your workflow, and what you prefer. Now I'm pretty positive I'm going to miss out at least one method of how to do this, because there's so many ways of doing this in Blender. So if I have missed anything out, do say in the comments section, or if you want to play a bit of a game, pause the video, don't look at any other comments, and write as many ways that you can think of of cutting up an object in Blender. See if you get as many as I'm going to go through, or see if you get more. Now in this I'm going to cover some free methods that you just use the native tools in Blender. I'll also cover a couple of add-ons as well, and a couple of tips to make this as effective as possible. So let's get started with some basic ones. So I've got my cube here, I'm actually going to shift and D to duplicate that so I've got more than one cube. And we're going to start with a method that I would say is probably not the best choice, but in some instances it allows you to be more exact. And that is to use the knife tool. So I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to press K to get the knife tool going. Click, press C to make it go through to the other side. Click and then spacebar to confirm that cut. And we've got that cutting to the view. Now, you could also do this without using a knife tool. You could, if we just undo this, control and R, and put an edge loop in, or anything like that. So any form of edges is gonna work out great. And then all we're gonna do is select the faces that's on one of the sides, and then we're gonna press P, and then separate by selection. And this now means that we've got one object here, and one object here. So we've sliced this object in half. Now, notably, this hasn't actually got all the faces sorted. We're gonna to have to go into edge mode or vertex mode and press F to add a face in those. Or we could press N if you've got your 3D toolbox activated, check all, and then press clean up a manifold, and that will do it for us as well. So that's one method we could go through. Okay, let's duplicate this cube and we'll do something different. Now, this is actually relatively similar, but it has some slightly different applications. So let's go into edit mode, do the same thing of putting an edge all the way across, and let's select that edge. Now, most of the times that you'll use this technique, actually, these edges will be something that's already on the model. Let's say, for example, you wanted to separate an arm from a torso. So you're gonna have loads of edges that you'll select in that way. Then we'll control an E, and we're going to mark sharp. Now, this is gonna feel a little bit odd if you don't know this is a thing. Uh, it's a little bit old school, but it is really useful. So I'm gonna add modifier, and we're going to go to edge split. And then we've got some options here. I'm gonna turn off the angle and make sure my sharp edges is on. And what this is gonna do is flip this along those sharp edges. So let's apply this, go into face mode, and if I just press L here, we can G and move this apart. So you can see that we've got these two separate parts, both in the same object. So very useful for splitting apart things like larger models or if you want to keep them in place. We can then just A, P and separate by loose parts and we've got our two separate parts here. So we've kept everything in place quite nicely. Now just to be clear about this, as with the other one, we do have these holes in the mesh so we're going to need to fix those as well. Next up we have our trusty booleans. So what we're going to be using for this is ball tools. Just go to Edit, Preferences, type in Ball, and then you've got Ball Tools here. Now I'm gonna quickly deactivate Hard Ops because this overtakes Ball Tools in many ways, and I just wanna show you exactly how it will work. So for this to work, we need to Shift A, Mesh, and bring in some other object. Let's bring in a cube. Let's bring that over here, and we'll just rotate it slightly so we've got a nice, interesting angle. And then all we're going to do is click the object that we want to use to slice it in half. So it's going to go across this face as it's intersecting it. Shift click on our other object and we're going to press control and forward slash on our number pad. And that is going to do a slice, which actually sort of gets worked out using the intersection boolean. Then at this point, we can move this apart, though if we do this, there is a slight issue here because the cutter is still being kept in the same place. So to do this, we actually need to apply this. Click that this making a single user data is okay, and then we can G and move that across. So we can do this using Booleans. Now, because we can do this with Booleans, it's also very nice to do this with Box Cutter. Now, Box Cutter is a paid for add-on. It's very, very worth it. There's a link in the description, both for Box Cutter. I would advise you to get it with Hard Ops. You'll see why in a second. 
just by one of these features, but HardOps has millions of different tools you can use. There's some links in the descriptions of playlists there, but box cutter if I press Alt and W is gonna make this a lot faster. So all you need to do is either come up here or press D. I still want this to be a box. I'm gonna select this draw line method so I have some options here, but importantly, we're gonna to go to slice. You'll notice that you also have this line option here and this slice option here. If you want to know more about box cutter, do have a look at the playlist. I've got a really full description of what all of this does, but this is just a demonstration video. So I'm just gonna click there, drag across, double click, and now we've got our object sliced apart just as we did over here. And exactly the same way, if I press G, I'm gonna to have to apply this, except for I don't because of hard ops. So hard ops has a lot of different tools as I mentioned, but one of them, if I go to edit, preferences, and then reactivate hard ops, is that with one of these objects selected, I can press Q, go to operations and select uniquify. Now what that is gonna do is instead of just having one object here that's acting as the cutter, so this object here, what it will do is make a duplicate of this object and make sure there's one for each of the different objects. I'll just demonstrate. So notice that at the moment if I press G and move, we've got a problem. And if I selected the cutter and move, then it's gonna cause a problem with the other one because there's only one cutter. If I press here Q and then uniquify, what we've got here if I press now G, is we've got this object can now be moved apart, but we haven't applied the Boolean. That's because if I come down to my cutters, it has now generated a second cutter for this object, which means that this has been done non-destructively. We can put it back in place, and I can always choose to change things around if I wanted to. For example, I could bring back this cutter, select it, and G, and then make just a little gap between it as well. So a lot of potential uses for Uniquify. So that brings us up to one, two, three, four methods, and we'll just go for a five and a six. So let's just G that over here, and then we'll shift and D to bring in another one. Now, these two are also very similar. In fact, actually, let's delete one of those because we're gonna need to do something with this cube. And that is that we can actually slice objects using some of the sculpting tools. Now, to do this, we need more faces. So I'm gonna to go into edge mode, control and E, and we're going to subdivide this. And I'm gonna do this, I don't know, let's say 100 times. We could also use a subdivision surface or a multi-resolution modifier, whatever you prefer to use. But we'll just demonstrate this this way. Then we'll go into sculpt mode. So let's go here, and I'm just gonna bring out these tools so we can see what we're using. And we're actually gonna use the mask brush. Now, there is just a normal mask brush where you can paint things. We don't want that. We want to use a box mask. Now, if you don't want this to be perfectly vertical or horizontal when you draw it, you can choose to use a line mask. So let's do something like that. You press F to flip this over. So you can change which side's being picked. You can tell just by the slight shadowing. So let's pick that. And we've got our mask here. And then I can go up to mask. Oh, before we do that, let's go into object mode and shift and D to duplicate this because we're gonna do another thing in a second. So let's go back into sculpting mode, mask, and then we're going to mask slice to a new object. So there we go. We've now got this object here and this one here, but you can see automatically the problem here. It's quite grated because it's going off of all of the individual lines that were made up from us subdividing our mesh. So not really the smoothest, and we can go and smooth this out, but there is an alternative. So let's come over to this object, go into edit mode, and I'm just gonna press Alt and N to clear that mask so we're starting from scratch. Do remember that this has been subdivided already. So instead of using the mask tool by itself, we're actually going to fudge this a little bit, and we're gonna draw a face set. But we're actually gonna do a box face set. So just here, let's select our box, and we've got our two face sets. Now, you can see here, just like our mask, this is quite grainy, but what we can do with our normal draw face sets brush selected, if we hold down shift, we can smooth this out. So I'm just holding down shift while dragging this backwards and forwards. You can make this a bit faster by upping the strength as well. So for example, if I do that here, it'll be way quicker because the strength is higher and we can do this here as well. So this is now smoothing out those edges, but you'll notice, unlike the normal smooth brush, it's not really heavily deforming the mesh. Then I can press H on either side, whichever side you have your mouse over, it will hide that side. So if I put my mouse over here and press H, it'll hide that face set. 
and then what I can do is press Control and I, which is going to mask everything in that object. I can then press OH to unhide the other side, but now we've got a nice smooth edge to our mask, so I can once again mask, mask slice to new object, and we've got that separated out, and we've got a much smoother, though not entirely perfect, two halves. So we can do this in sculpt mode as well. So there we go, six different methods of slicing up an object in Blender at different points, different ones are more useful for different reasons, and some are free, some involve paid for add-ons, which do give you a little bit more utility in some instances. So did you get six methods, and importantly, which ones have I missed out? Do let me know in the comments section, because I'm sure there's something I just couldn't think of off the top of my head, but that's fine, we're all here to learn, and it'd be great to have you commenting on what I've missed out. If you like the video, do hit the like button, subscribe if you want more Blender content, and if you want to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.